It's Monday morning and I can confirm that the snow lasts overnight. Anyway, colour coordinate today. Got me padded Baltra. Boiler suit on, me red and black hat. We're just putting this bearing back on, but the belts slid off while we've been messing. And now we can't get the bearing on, so we've got to like pull the rubber belt over and then put the bearing on and lift the roller back up. Problem is, because it's so long, it's really heavy. So we're gonna try and pull it with a ratchet strap with the little merlin. Just gonna swing the magnet out of the way. The bracket's a bit dodgy, so we're putting a strap on it just to make sure. And then we'll lift this belt up vertical and hopefully the slack will hang down there. There we go, got a lightning conductor up now. That's hung down, so hopefully the rubber should push straight across. Andrew's shaking his neck because all the chip just fell down his neck. And Rob's got a substandard hat on today. Mm, should do that. Rob's just tapping the burn on now, but we're using the socket so we can hit the inner race, not the outer race. Not to damage it. Is it just me or does it happen to everyone? Every time you just want to print one piece of paper, instead of it taking 30 seconds, the printer just wants to do like an opening ceremony or something and it takes like 20 minutes to mess around and make all sorts of buzzing noise before it actually prints an invoice for you. I'm just don't to go back outside. I don't like being inside. Andrew's just took the flail off a fast track. He's just going to go and do some work in a minute. Big job on the community centre up the road has got a Christmas tree that they can't pick up, so I'm going to go now with one of the Merlots. And Rob has been sorting out the chipper. But that bearing and roller is all back together and everything's hunky-dory. But the main drive belt, which is absolutely huge, so it goes from down there right the way up here. In fact, Rob said it should be the quiz question, how long is the belt? If anyone wants to guess, leave it in the comments. Anyway, you've got this belt up here. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them. Anyway, one of them's come off. So we're going to see what it runs like with seven on because I think it's very, very expensive. So um, we'll see. We obviously can't transmit just enough horsepower at the moment, but we're not doing a lot of logs at the moment anyway. So I think it'll be fine for a good few months. Well, at least I hope it will be. Anyway, I'll get the Merlin. We'll lift this tree up. As well as the agronomist being today, obviously the guy from uh, Sainsbury's has been here as well, two and a half hours. Great guy. We talked about loads of things. It didn't really disagree on anything as well, which is good. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. We're going to shoot and put this Christmas tree up before that sun goes down. Right, I'll try and see if that will lift it. Yeah, do you want to put your... Yeah. Right, take two, short strap, tighter strap. I feel like a good snapping off, it's a proper heavy tree. Probably don't snap. I keep telling everyone to back up, but they all seem to be wanting to stand where it is. It's a snug fit. At least it won't blow over. There we go. Ollie, thank you very much. It's all right. It looks better now, isn't it? About <laughs> four inches too wide for the hole. Just truing it up now with some wedges. Yeah. That is a quality Christmas tree. It's proper wide, proper dense. Anyway, um, someone had messaged me before and Northwest where their ambulance are looking for a couple of nice big trees for their helipads. So if they're uh, not sure if they're sorted yet, but if anyone knows where they can get one from or get one donated, let me know. Yeah, that tree, there was 12 of them trying to stand it up. They even had the postman helping them. It was so heavy. I and mean, even when we put the strap round, it looked like the strap was gonna snap. It was, it was a big tree. So uh, yeah, it's up now. I'll, I might go back in a few days when they put the decorations on and get a picture of it. Look away now, ladies. Rob's flashing. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. So many walks, isn't it? Right. 
as you know, I met with Sainsbury today. Two and a half hours. Now, one thing's for certain, they're now paying the farmer more. Apparently they were going to anyway, but certainly after the video last week, they have now, I think it's about 20% extra that they're now paying. Hopefully that's making it back down to farm level, because don't forget there's a middleman, and that middleman might have been taking some of the cream, because they did also up the price a while back. The other thing is, they don't want to put prices up in shops of sort of like your staples like potatoes, eggs, and things like that. Because if they put the price up, people go elsewhere and they lose market share. So there's a kind of a, they're all competing to be the cheapest. Now, it sounds simple to just say, we'll just put 20% on everything in the shop. But the public are skint. So there's a dysfunction there. They, they can't put the price up because people can't afford it. We've got a cost of living crisis. But we also can't afford to produce it either. Now, they need to make sure that, that they're buying it at a sustainable price, which is quite difficult for them to do because some farmers don't want to talk about cost of production because some farmers have a real cheap cost of production and do all right, but there's always the haves and the have-nots. So it's a really, very, very complicated system, but at least there's a little bit of change. Now, the only way I can see it working, I mean, people go to supermarkets, rip people off all the time, isn't exactly true because they only work on these small margins but when we came out of the second world war we needed cheap food so there was lots of grants for drainage lots of grants to incentivize production on farms so that the nation could be fed cheaply and affordably the problem is now the government have kind of forgotten what that policy was about and are now turning into greening and planting trees and hedges and actually slowing down food production. If you slow down food production, you get less of it, so maybe the price goes up, but that's not good if you've got a population that's hungry with no money in the pocket. So we couldn't fix the whole broken food chain in two and a half hours. It, it's nearly impossible because it's not just in eggs, it's in every sector really. But what we did realise very quickly was that, you know, the government needs to start supporting farmers if we want homegrown food. Because, like I was pointing out, I think the other year, because of COVID, Network Rail only gets about eight or nine billion, I think it is a year. Anyway, they got like 17 billion because of COVID, just to keep the trains running that no one was sat on anyway. Well, UK Ag, PLC, gets about three billion of support each year. Now, we're feeding everyone every day, or we're importing it to feed everyone every day. Well, if you give agriculture a little bit more support for these difficult times where we've got hyperinflation and everything, maybe we can produce more food and we can be more sustainable and they can still sell it cheap in the shops because we can get our cost of production down. I don't know, but what, but what I will say is this is a bigger problem than the supermarkets can sort on their own and the processors. But they definitely need to start asking the questions of the farmers that supply the packers, the processors, whichever whether they're getting a good deal. And I said, maybe they could have some sort of system in place where farmers can, can who are their suppliers, can rate how they feel about the job and how, how much confidence they've got going forward, whether they think they're getting a fair price. And if they start to build up some data, then they'll know that maybe some of the packers that they're using or some of the processors might be lifting the leg and taking the cream out of the job so the farmers have got no profit left. I've tried to summarise it in four minutes, but it was two and a half hours of... of ideas and thoughts but give Sainsbury's to due they've realized there was a problem they needed to kick up the backside to realize that I would say and maybe not the agricultural team but maybe those above needed to kick up the backside to realize that they've got a problem with eggs to then say to the agricultural team let's sort it out and maybe that was where the more money come from but fair play to them They've upped the game. A lot of other supermarkets have thought we don't want the bad press either and they've upped their game. So I would say it's a result. But there still needs to be a lot of work on it. Sorry if that sounds like a rant and it sounds like the same route of brainwash me. But it is a really complicated subject. And, you know, unfortunately, they were the fall guy for it because they were accused by some egg farmers of being the worst payers. But they've, they've sorted the job out, hopefully. And now horizon scanning to make sure that there's no other problems in any other sectors which is good but no government start listening to people we've got a nation to feed and we've got to feed them cheaply because they've got no money 
So you need to start investing in UK agriculture, otherwise we're going to have to import anything. And when you import it, people can just name the price. So that's today's run. Right, this is today's birthday bumper. So Caden Morris, I think it was yesterday, but I think I put his mum's name down by mistake. Uh, oh, Andrew's back with the fast track. Uh, ben Lowe, 14. Oliver PC Morrison. Now we've got loads of three three word names here. So we've got Finley Squidge Murphy. Don't know whether that's real or just a nickname. But Jack James Smith, uh, Trisha Lamborn, Matt Edgar, and George Marshall. Now it says the 28th of December, but it's the 28th of November. So I don't know whether someone's got that wrong, but happy birthday anyway. And £17,485 raised so far. So thank you everyone for them donations for the air ambulance. Right, we've got a gingerbread man here, so we're going to put it in the back of the buggy that's now covered in snow because Andrew's been playing with the snow machine again. Let's see what it does. Looks a little bit like you, that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can stand on the back holding a candy cane. Oh, it's the wrong way around. Where's his face? <laughs> Oh, does it need more cable? Yeah. It's getting there. You just gotta let them rise, isn't it? It's just like baking a cake. It's all right, isn't it? What do we think? On the roof or in the back? Stand next to it for scale, Joe. <laughs> It is quite big, isn't it? It must be like a good eight, eight foot, but it'll still go on there and I still don't think it'd be too high for telegraph wires. And then when, you, when you're a spectator, you'll just see this gingerbread man coming down the road, won't you? I don't, I don't know, you know, I think it looks good like that. Rob thinks it looks better in the back, but if we turned it round so it was facing forwards, Joe could just stand there holding him all night. <laughs> no, if that, if that was turned round, that'd look really good. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good, that. Because you just see that, wouldn't you? You could, you could nearly make that completely stealth. Like, wrap that black so you can't see it, and then you've just got a big gingerbread man coming down the road. Rob's not convinced. I would, yeah. In the back, actually. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Go on, someone stand next to it for scale. It's definitely at least eight foot. It does look like you, Joe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's enough fun playing with gingerbread men in the workshop. We're thinking of new ideas to make the tractors look bigger and better than last year. We want to raise the bar every year so they look even better for the kids. Anyway, thanks for watching today, um, and I will see you all tomorrow. Hopefully it's going to be dry again. It's been nice and dry all day today. It's a bit cold, though. Anyway, see you later. <laughs>